We have data from about 200,000, 300,000 pieces of equipment in 30 or 40 countries around the world. Anywhere from 40 to 95% of medical equipment in developing world settings is not working. We have a second study which looked at about uh, 3,000 pieces of broken equipment, specifically looking at why that equipment wasn't working. Actually, we found that 70 or 80% of the medical equipment could be put back into service without importing spare parts. The biggest problem is trained personnel. There just aren't enough trained technicians on the ground to repair the equipment. In the fall of 2009, with funding from the GE Foundation, Engineering World Health began a three-year mission to train 45 Rwandan hospital technicians how to keep valuable equipment up and running. With direct cooperation from Rwanda's Minister of Health, Dr. Richard Sizabera, the Biomedical Equipment Technology Training Program was launched. Through this course, students for the first time uh, learn electronics and medical courses and all about medical equipment. Benefits of BMET training were immediately recognized in Rwanda. EWH Executive Director Melissa Beard and EWH staff members Kostika Uitanzi and Laura Perry visited the hospitals of BMET students after they had received just one session of training. The biggest thing I take away from it is just the immediate impact that it's had. Um, the fact that the students have been able to go out after such a short period of time and start making repairs that make a difference. At Bataro Hospital in the Barrera region, blood pressure cuffs that leaked air were being thrown away, but replacements were not easily found. When the hospital's BMET students returned from the first round of training, they repaired dozens of faulty cuffs. The fix was an old-fashioned one. Immerse the cuff in soapy water and follow the bubbles to find the leak. It was so easy and simple. One guy from Biomba Hospital, the fa that weekend he, ca he, he go back to his hospital, mm -hmm. he repaired 15. 15 blood pressure cuffs in one yeah, weekend. in one weekend. Rescuing fallen equipment is undeniably cost-effective for the hospital, but the impact on the quality of Rwandan health care and the lives of Rwandans in general goes beyond dollars. Most of Rwanda's 10 million residents live in the countryside. Few have transportation options beyond their own two feet, a bicycle taxi, or the occasional bus. Traveling to receive medical care is often a full-day commitment or longer. Imagine giving up a day's pay of $1.39 in order to reach the hospital with an injury that needs x-ray, only to find the machine is not working and won't be for some time. So what do they have to do? They either have to find transportation to take them to another hospital or that person has to get themselves to another hospital, have the x-rays taken. If the x-ray machine is working at that hospital, bring those x-rays back in order to be examined by the physician at, at that hospital. That is a common, everyday experience in the vast majority of hospitals in developing countries. This scenario of a broken x-ray machine happened in 2010 at Rwanda's Gisenyi Hospital. Smaller hospitals send their own patients to Gisenyi for x-rays. The machine can service 20 to 25 patients a day when it's working. If the machine is, is not functioning, so there is a, a big problem in the diagnosis right. for, for medical doctors and for the, the, the care of the patient. The good news? This machine was eventually fixed. The hospital's maintenance employee, Celestine, was already a BMET student in training. Using skills learned in BMET classes, Celestine was able to troubleshoot the problem. A blown fuse. An almost insignificant item, but unrecognized simple solutions like these have sidelined equipment before in Rwanda and beyond. About half of everything that's donated or half of everything that's out of service could be fixed generally for less than $50. Um, so oftentimes the fixes for the equipment are really doable um, and really easy but they're not easy if you don't have access to locally available resources, if you've not been taught um, in any way about simple fixes. And the need is 
global. It's not just in Rwanda, but, and it's not just in Africa, but it is global. Every country has a problem with a large amount of medical equipment being put out of service for oftentimes very, very basic, very simple faults. With BMET training, this trend can be altered. It's already happening in hospitals throughout Rwanda. For the short time already he has taken the program, there are many equipment he, call, he can now repair, which he could not do before the, starting the program. At Rawama Ghana Hospital, Dr. Jean-Claude Ndijamana has already seen his BMET student making repairs that normally would have required a five to ten day wait for an outside expert to handle. Dr. Ndijamana expects doctors and certified biomedical equipment technicians will soon work hand in hand as a partnership that will continue to improve the health care for all Rwandans. Cost effective, innovative and fully sustainable the Biomedical Equipment Technician Training Program funded by the GE Foundation and implemented by Engineering World Health is designed to be transitioned over to local educators after three years. At the same time BMET students receive certifications, Engineering World Health will have trained and empowered a new staff of local educators for future classes. I would like to say that BMET is a cure. In other words, we go into the country, we install the program, we get local trainers to eventually take over the training for us and in fact that has been successful in Ghana in Honduras and in other countries unfortunately I'm afraid to say that we will probably be doing this forever I think there will always be poverty there will always be countries that don't have enough people who are technically trained to deal with their medical problems and their medical equipment problems